have uh, discussed the auto cycle and the diesel cycle and we will move on to other air standard cycles as we promised in the previous lecture, but I thought that it will be nice if we work out a couple of numerical problems on auto cycle and diesel cycle. So, that is the agenda of today's uh, lecture. So, the first problem <coughs> is problem 9.1 to approximate an actual spark ignition engine consider an air standard auto cycle that has heat addition of 1800 kilo joule per kg of air and a compression ratio of 7 and pressure and temperature at the beginning of compression process of 90 kilo Pascal and 10 degree centigrade. Assuming constant specific heats determine the maximum pressure and temperature of the cycle and the thermal efficiency of the cycle and the mean effective pressure. So, I will define what is mean effective pressure as we go forward. This is the new term that you have encountered and we have not defined it so far. So, uh, as usual I will go to the board and uh, draw a schematic with the given data and then we will work out the problem step by step. Uh, normally, uh, whenever we give such problems, we expect that the students will work out the problems from the fundamentals. That means, we will identify the state points in the thermodynamic cycle and then do the calculation instead of using the final formula for efficiency that uh, we have already derived in the previous lecture. In such a situation, the subject really becomes concept based and not a formula based where you have a formula and you plug in the value to get the answer. So, we will follow the same spirit here. So, you have an auto cycle, I will draw the PV and TS diagram very quickly because this is what we have done in the one of the previous lectures. So, let us see what is given. So, Q h the heat addition is from 2 to 3 right. So, Q h is Q 2 3 this is 1800 kilo joule per kg. So, for making a cycle analysis we can assume that 1 kg of air is the working fluid the compression ratio R is 7 and pressure and temperature at the beginning of the compression is 90 kPa and 10 degree centigrade. So, that means P 1 is 90 kPa and P 1 is 10 degree centigrade. Okay. So, you have to find out, let us see what you have to find out, you have to find out what is P max. This is nothing but P 3, you have to find out T max which is nothing but T 3, you have to find out the efficiency and the mean effective pressure. So, let us try to find out P max and T max in a step by step manner. See 
this kind of problem is very important because had these questions not been had these parts not been given find out p max t max efficiency calculation people would have uh, i mean just spontaneously tried to plug in the formula and get the answer but p max t max you cannot really plug in any formula to get the answer you have to identify the state point so you know that p1 v1 to the power gamma is equal to p2 v2 to the power gamma right so p2 by p1 is equal to v1 by v2 to the power gamma so this is r to the power gamma gamma is 1.4 P1 is known, so this will give you what is P2. Let me see whether I have the value width of P2 or not. Uh, I do not have the value of P2, but I mean you can calculate the straight away. Then uh, you also have P1 V1 by T1 is equal to P2 V2 by T2, right. That means you have T2 by T1 is equal to P2 by P1 into V2 by V1. This is 1 by R. and p2 by p1 you have already calculated so you will get what is t2 by t1 because you know what is t1 in this formula you have to use kelvin that is 273.15 plus 10 so that will give you what is t2 t2 is 616.6 kelvin Okay. So, once you have T2, then what you require? You require T3 and P3. So, how do you know T3? So, for that you are given this heat addition process. So, QH is equal to Cv into T3 minus T2. So, because Q h is equal to C v into T 3 minus T 2, you have a value of Q h known, C v of A r known constant C v, then uh, you will get what is T 3. So, this T 3 is uh, 3127 Kelvin. C V of air is 0.717 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So, that you can use to get what is T3, this is T max. Then uh, what is P max? So, to calculate that you can use P 2 V 2 by T 2 is equal to P 3 V 3 by T 3. V 2 and V 3 are the same. So, P 3 by P 2 is equal to T 3 by T 2. So, that will tell you what is P 3. So, this 
So, P3 So, next is efficiency. So, we have the temptation of using the formula, I mean nowadays with multiple choice type of answers. So, if you know the formula, you should not waste time and just you know plug in the formula to get the answer, but there is always a great joy of getting the result from fundamental calculations instead of going through the formula. So, the efficiency is at least one or two fundamental steps you can write 1 minus q l by q h. So, 1 minus c v <coughs> into p 4 minus t 1 by c v into t 3 minus t 2. Okay. So, 1 minus t 1 by t 2 into t 4 by t 1 minus 1 by t 3 by t 2 minus 1. And you can easily show that these two are the same, this we have earlier shown in our derivation. So, it is 1 minus t 1 by t 2, t 1 by t 2 you have already obtained as a part of this problem. So, you straight away use that. So, what you will get is this answer, this is 54.1 percent. The final part of the problem that remains to be answered is what is the mean effective pressure. So, what is mean effective pressure? So, recall that the work done is integral of P d V in a quasi equilibrium process. So, instead of this P d V, if the this particular expression does not work, still you have some work done, but the work done is not PDV. I will tell you that in the real internal combustion engine process, because the process is not a quasi equilibrium process, PDV is not valid, but still you get some work. That work is not just evaluatable through the PDV formula. So, instead of this, we could have a network and had this network been achieved by an average pressure undergoing a change in volume from V1 to V2, then that equivalent pressure is called as mean effective pressure. So, this is mean effective pressure times V1 minus V2. That is the definition of mean effective pressure. So, it is an ever it is a hypothetical first of all it is not a real pressure. It is a hypothetical pressure constant pressure which multiplied with the change in volume would have derived the same equivalent network as what is obtained from a thermodynamic cycle. That is the definition of mean effective pressure. So, here how do you calculate W net? W net is Q h times the efficiency, Q h is already given and for V 1 minus V 2 you have P 1 V 1 is equal to R T 1 and P 2 V 2 is equal to R T 2. You know uh, P 1 R T 1, so this will give you what is V 1 and V 2 is V 1 by R small r. So, you will get what is V 1 and V 2. So, you can substitute that here from that you will get an expression or, or a value of mean effective pressure which is 1258 kilopascal. So, this 
is a very important practical engineering parameter because this gives you an idea. So, if you know this value somehow you can magically multiply this with a change in volume to get the work output of the cycle. Not only that it gives you an area an idea of the average pressure that is prevailing during the cyclic process. We will work out another problem this problem we have worked out for the auto cycle we will work out another problem for the diesel cycle. So, a diesel engine has a compression ratio of 20 is to 1 with an inlet of 95 kilo Pascal and 290 Kelvin state 1 with a volume of 0 0.5 liter. The maximum cycle temperature is 1800 Kelvin. What is the maximum pressure specific net specific work specific work means work per unit mass and the thermal efficiency. So, we will solve this problem by going to the board as we have done for the previous examples. So, as usual we will draw the P V diagram and the T S diagram. Let us again note down what is written. R is equal to 20. You can see the value of R. So, look into the R of the previous problem. So, previous problem was the auto cycle problem R was 7. This is a diesel cycle problem where R is 20. And you can, so these are all practical data, do not think that these are hypothetical data to solve some numbers. So, these will give you a quick practical idea that why it is not so legitimate to compare the auto cycle and the diesel cycle with the same R, right? the R ranges are grossly different. So, R is equal to 20, P1 is equal to 95 kilo Pascal. T1 is equal to 290 Kelvin, V1 is 0 0.5 liter, T max is equal to T3 which is equal to 1800 Kelvin. So, what is the maximum pressure how will you find out? So, maximum pressure is P 2 right P 2 and P 3 are same right. So, uh, you can write. So, first of all P 1 V 1 to the power gamma is equal to P 2 V 2 to the power gamma right. So, P 2 is simply P 1 into V 1 by V 2 to the power gamma. So, P 1 into R to the power gamma. So, with all these values known you will get P 2 is 6297 
0.5 kilo Pascal. This is same as P3 which is P max. What else is required? The net specific work and thermal efficiency. So, for the net work it is you can calculate either area under the PV diagram, but easier way to do is just calculate QH minus QL. Because QH and QL you can calculate from the temperatures of the state points without going through the integral PDV route. So, QH what is that? Cp into T3 minus T2, right. So, you require T2 and T3. So, you have T1 V1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 V2 to the power gamma minus 1. So, T2 is equal to T1 into V1 by V2 to the power gamma minus 1 that is R to the power gamma minus 1. So, this will give you what is T2 and then T3 you can calculate P2 V2 by T2 is P3. T3 is already given right ok. So, very nice. So, at we can calculate V3 from here, but V3 may not be needed, V3 may not be needed. Let us see what is needed only we will calculate that. So, T3 is, so let us follow step by step whatever is needed we will calculate that. So, T3 is 1800 Kelvin and T2 is given here, so we can get QH. What is QL? QL is Cv into T4 minus T1, ok. So, T4 you can calculate this by noting. So, you already know T1, T2 and T3, right? You, want, you do not know T4, but what you know that T4 V4 to the power, you require V4 because you require V3 that is why. So, T4 V4 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T3, sorry, T1 V1 to the power gamma minus 1. So, this V4 is same as us, uh, sorry. So, then you can write V4 by V1 or T4 is equal to T1 into V1 by V4 to the power gamma minus 1. So, this you can write V1 by V2 into V2 by V3 into V3 by V4. Or you can simply calculate V4 and substitute it here instead of going through this root. So, what you can do is to calculate V3, V4 you have to know what is V3. So, you can write P2 V2 by T2 is equal to P3 V3 by T3. Okay. So, what is given? You have uh, P2 and P3 you know all this. In fact, they are the same. So, V3 is V2 into T3 by T2. Okay. So, V2 you know because V2 is V1 divided by R. So, you know what is V3 from here and how do you get V4? So, 3 to 4 is P V to the power gamma equal to constant. 
So, P 3 V 3 to the power gamma is equal to P 4 V 4 to the power gamma. Right? And how do you know uh, what is P4? You can relate P4 with P1, right? So you can write 1 to 4 is constant volume. So yes, P P3 is P2. V4 is V1. V4 is V1, but for calculating for calculating uh, oh, so here we just require just V4 is yes. Sorry, here this is not correct. So let us do little bit refreshed. So, you know, so we, uh, so we require T4 and T1. So, let us do with this. So, you have uh, T4. Uh, so, from, so up to state 3 we know everything, right. Up to state 3 we know everything. Uh, you also know V3 because so let us complete that. Let us up to state 3, you know uh, T3, you know P3, which is same as P2, and P2 V2 by T2 is equal to P3 V3 by T3. So, you know uh, uh, so mistakenly I wrote this T V to the power gamma equal to constant that is not this one, but this one 3 to 4. So, I am just recalculating that part. So, uh, P 2 and P 3 are the same. So, from here you will get what is V 3. So, once you know V 3 you know state point 3 completely P 3 V 3 T 3 only remaining state point is state point 4 and uh, so T v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to constant. So, T 3 v 3 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T 4 v 4 to the power gamma minus 1, right. So, if you know what is uh, v 3, if you know what is T 3, and V4 is same as V1. So, this equation will give you what is T4, right? then you know all the relevant temperatures. So, I am very sorry, I mean instead of 3 to 4, I mistakenly wrote 4 to 1 as T V to the power gamma as constant. So, this is T4, uh, let me see if I have the value, yes, it is 698 Kelvin. So, the efficiency, so the net work W net, this is nothing but Q H minus Q L. So, this answer is 550.5 kilo joule per kg. And the efficiency is W net by Q H, this is 65.3 percent. Okay. So, uh, we have worked out a couple of problems today on auto cycle and diesel cycle. We will continue with another air standard cycle in the next lecture that is called as Breton cycle or Joule cycle. Thank you very much.